I've been waiting for this moment for quite some time. First thing I want everybody to do is get a little bit more comfortable. Um, this might be something slightly different than you used to. Okay, so I want uh, I want to be able to interact with you. I want to have a conversation with you. I want to have a dialogue with you. So I don't want you to feel like there is a, uh, you know, when something comes to your mind, I want you to be able to ask me. Because some of the concepts might be new um, in terms of uh, reading from the scripture. Some of the interpretations might be um, new, different. So you will have questions, all right? So don't feel like you got to hold them. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till later on. You know, when you get the question, just let me know so we can get busy because this is all for naught if we don't leave here with new understanding about our body. All right, I, I don't want to just be up here in my nice little suit and everything and then nobody learns anything. All right, so that's what's important is that you guys learn something that you didn't know when you came in. All right. So um, while we work on getting the, yeah, while we work on getting the, 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 the visuals, um, is there something in particular because I know usually when I speak, everybody wants to hear the information, but somebody comes because they have somebody that they know that's dealing with diabetes, and somebody else comes because they know somebody that's dealing with anemia, and somebody else comes because they have somebody that's dealing with a, a cancer issue, and, and some people come because they were dragged here and forced. And <laughs> okay, so um, we can open up the floor with some of those things. The job of the melanocyte is to reach the keratinocyte and inject it with melanin, to impregnate it with melanin so that your body can pull the nutrients from the sun, so that your body can convert the sun's light into the nutrients that your body needs. There's a long process that goes on in your body for that to be able to happen. And when we put these foreign foods in our body, we hinder that process. We flat out stop that process. If we understand electricity, you got any electricians in the room? Conductors conduct electricity, they allow electricity to move through them. Insulators block electricity. When you eat processed sugar, processed starch, dead flesh, all of those things are insulators. They block the electrical current, the light from flowing through your body. Paroxymal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. All right? I brought this up a second time. Because it's important. I want you to understand this. This is becoming big in the black community, slowly but surely. And you can make your own inferences from this. All right? Because I don't I can't make this stuff up. But the white blood cells attack and eat the red blood cells. At night when the sun goes down. So I, I'm not even going to make my little inferences. you already seen True Blood. I'm sure you're watching HBO. But this is for real. You can look it up. Take your notes. Vitiligo. The process of white blood cells eating the melanocytes and the keratinocytes in the skin. The scientists call this damnation. I never heard of damnation outside of the church before. My reference for damnation was being doomed to burn in hell's fire. But then I said to myself, wow, wait a minute, hold on. Because if I lose melanin, then the sun will burn me every time I go out there. I get skin cancer. So scientists call the process of losing your melanin by excess ammonia in the body, deamination. I said, man, if you want to put something, hire something from black folks, you put it in the book, don't you? Oh, man, I'm going to eat my, I'm going to eat me some chicken. That's fine. Just know what you're getting, though. Just know what you're getting. Because science in the Bible tell you the same thing. 
only difference between the damnation and the Bible and the damnation you're going to find in the science textbook is a letter E. Process the same. You're still going to burn. In a literal, figurative, literal and figurative sense. Because there's nothing worse on this planet than to be sick and can't fix it. Brothers go into prison 180 pounds, come out 240 pounds looking like Zeus. People go into the hospital 180 pounds, come out 110 pounds, clinging to life. I promise you, there's no other thing on this planet that's worse than the torture of dying slowly from an illness. Except for the family members that have to bear that burden with you. This is nothing you want to play with. It's serious to me. Next slide. Okay. So, a sister told me when I got down here, she said, Minister Inky, you need to get real where you fake at. I was like, what that? What's that? What's that? Some Miami slang? What that mean? You need to get real where you fake at. So I thought about that. I said, you know what? I'm getting ready to go tell the church. You need to get real where you fake at. You got to make a decision. And if you don't make a decision, it's going to be made for you. You're going to follow the simple instructions here, or you're going to live with the results. So, Minister Inky, what's the solution? You do not have to ask Minister Inky, what's the solution, when the answer is in a 2,000-year-old book that everybody owns, but they haven't read yet. I wanted to ask you to put your hands up, but I'm not even going to do it. It's just a rhetorical question. How many people have a Bible at home and have not read it cover to cover yet? You need to go do that. You'd be surprised what you find in that book. But... Let's go to Ezekiel 47, 12. Let's see what we find in this book. Come on, Minister Nicky. What you talking about, brother? Got us in here. We could be out eating chicken. <laughs> and by the river up on the banks thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for me. Those leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruits thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruits according to his mouth, because their water they issue out of the sanctuary, and the fruits thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So the fruits will be meat, and the leaves will be medicine. It's in the book. Psalms 104.14. It's in the book. The fruits will be the meat and the leaves will be the medicine. You got questions, sis? Oh, stretch it. Okay. He caused the grass to grow for the cattle and herbs for the service of man. And he may bring forth food out of the earth. Food out of the earth. The herbs for the service of man. Proverbs 15, 17. And it's just four. It's all I could go, like I could I could get crazy with this. But I just gotta keep pointing this out. Because you'd be like, oh well, it's just in Genesis 129, but no, no, it's all through the book. From the front to the beat to the end. Because Revelation 22 2 is like all I mean, like you that's you almost at the index. Good. Proverbs 15, 17. Better is the dinner of herbs where love is than a saddled ox and hatred therewith. Now, can you do that one more time? Better is dinner of herbs where love is than a saddled ox and hatred therewith. 
better is the dinner where the herbs is and the love the herbs and the love is in the same place and the ox and the hate is in the same place. You gotta kill to eat animals. See people don't get that. When I go on the basic level, I'll be like, well, you Christian, right? Okay. Well, thou shalt not kill. Well, what about the food? Thou shalt not kill. Revelation 22.2. And all I did was read the book. I just read the book. I just read it. I didn't do anything supernatural. I just, I just read the book and the passages are right there. The fruit is the meat. The leaves are the medicine. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve matter of fruits, and yield her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. That's it. I said, wow, the leaves of the trees are for healing the nations? Okay, well, we start giving my kids leaves, and we're going to see what happens. Because the doctor wrote my daughter off. She was four years old, a sleepy nurse, ran over, and just make it more ironic, right? A nurse. So I had a personal issue with doctors and nurses, right? They said, your daughter's never going to walk again. I said, okay. I understand from your premise. That's, that's where you at with yours. I got this. I got plan B. It's in book it said the herbs is for the healing of the nation my daughter part of the nation so we're going to see how these leaves things work out so from never walk again I had her back in school in a couple of months people ask me what I did what she took what you gained for her? herbs, plants, minerals stop lying Very simple. You know the sister very well. She's going to tell you. I ain't giving up the plants. Some of the stuff I don't sell. And it's like, hey, this is some coconuts. You'll be all right. Thanks a lot. Our plants have developed hundreds and sometimes thousands into the tens of thousands of compounds that destroy the little angels of death we know of as bacteria and viruses. The presence of this variety and multitude of compounds is too much for the simple life forms to handle. So although they can mutate and grow immunity to antibiotics, the plant kingdom grows faster than the bacterial and the virus kingdom. The plant kingdom grows faster than the bacteria and the virus kingdom. So this book was written over 2,000 years ago, and we still don't know that on a large scale. We still don't know that on a large scale. So how many of us in this room, by show of hands, will prefer to wait 50 years or 60 years until they make this information widespread while they watch their, their children and their parents die versus eating plants and changing their lifestyle now. Next slide. Vitamin D and cancer. Vitamin D and cancer. Now see... I have a little bit more sympathy when I talk about this up north because I know that above the Georgia state line we don't get UVB for, for eight months out of the year up north. But in Florida you get UVB rays for nine months out of the year. But we don't go out in the sun. I go to the basketball court, all the young brothers standing under the trees. It's too hot. Yo, it's crazy. It's beaming out here, yo. How is beaming? Your blood is supposed to be at 98.7 degrees. It's only 90 degrees outside. So technically, it should be slightly cool to you. 
But what's happening is as the sun is hitting your body and releasing all the toxins from the tissues that you have stored up, all that chicken and turkey, that breakfast you had, the cream of wheat, the milk, the bread, is creating heat. Because anytime you have electricity flowing through a circuit, when it runs into a blockage, it creates heat at that blockage point. And when your body is full of blockages, you just feel that it's heat. I'm just hot. It's crazy out here. I gotta get me some soda. I gotta get me some pop, some nitrogen, some caffeine. Next slide. So how does this work exactly, Minister Inky? Go to the next one. I'm gonna skip some of these technical technical aspects to give you a very simple breakdown so you can take this home. Next one. Hats and shades. Hats and shades. Something as simple as hats and shades contribute to 70% of the cancers that we deal with. There are seven different vitamin D's known right now. Seven. You can purchase three of them in the store. Vitamin D1, vitamin D2, vitamin D3. The rest of them, they haven't figured out how to make fake ones yet. But every part of your body, at least the parts of your body where the most popular cancers are, have VDRs. VDRs are vitamin D receptors. You have to get sunlight on these areas of the body. Prostate. The chest, the breast, ladies. The super bras, them super bras is killing you. Your breasts have to move. They have to bounce. You're not exercising. So walking is supposed to supply that movement because you have a lot of fluids there. You have your lymphatic system there. The lymphatic system doesn't have a heart to pump. It doesn't have a pump to move the fluid through. It re requires you to exercise. So when you keep buying stronger and stronger bras to make sure that your breasts don't move, you're improving your chances of, of making sure that you get breast cancer. When you wear the deodorant under your arms, full of aluminum and mercury and zinc oxide, you're making sure that your lymph nodes don't sweat. And that might be cute, because you don't want to smell crazy. But when your lymph nodes can't release the toxins, they just back up inside your body. And you get a growth under your breast. So now, men, the breast cancer rate for men is approaching the same as it is for women. Okay. And this is here because the easiest channel, the most effective channel to get sunlight into the body is through the optic tract. But we put shades on. We put glasses on. Most, most, most of the reason why we put glasses on is because our eyes are weak because they're not getting enough sunlight. During the hours that you are naturally supposed to be outside, you're in school or at work. Then we go home and watch the TV, and we sit right up on it. My grandmother used to tell me to sit all the way to the other side of the room. Now we right up on it. And when we're not on that, we're on the computer and the laptop. These are simple, small things that we suffer from. I know so many people, they put lens crafters everywhere. Lens crafters ain't lose no money in the recession. Every year we get thicker and thicker glasses. So it becomes what? More and more difficult for us to read. So it becomes more and more difficult for us to get information. So we're going to be more and more reliant on what other people tell us. Okay. All right, y'all, once again, it's your boy Chauncey, a.k.a. Ukarima, GMOG Media. I'm here live and direct in North Miami at Jubilee Church. 
I'm here with a very special guest right here. I got uh, Minister Inky here. Um, actually, where exactly are you from? What I want to get from here with the audience is basically giving you a background as far as uh, what 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 got you started into your your actual business and give people information about what you do. So. All right. Um, well, I'm from the Bronx. Okay. Um, you ask some people, they say, you know, he's from Atlanta. Um, recent people will be like, you know, he's from Philly. Okay. Um, so, needless to say, I move around a bit. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's where I'm from. And then, you know, um, I guess my, my uh, where I'm from in terms of my, my health journey, uh, I had a stroke myself. The stroke was very violent. My heart stopped. Um, so I was dead for a little while. Uh, when I came back, I just went bananas. I didn't get any treatment from the hospital. I left and I, um, I went on raw food. I didn't eat nothing cooked, no meat, nothing for two years. Like I just, I wasn't even, I pulled myself out of society. And then um, a few years later, um, the next thing that really propelled me forward to more of what it looks like today, because then it was still just about me. Um, was the uh, my my daughter Amber? That's why the school is named the Amber Institute. When she was ran over by the car, and um, the doctor basically said she's never going to walk again. If you're lucky enough, um, we can get her walking again with limited mobility, maybe, or using a machine or a chair, or something. Four years tops. Um, but chances are she won't walk again, so we want to prepare you for that now. Uh, most people broken neck, broken spine, but there is no recovery. So, um, you know, I had, I had been doing a lot of studying, a lot of research, and it was just like, if any of this is worthwhile, because I put a lot of money and time into the research. Like, if it's, if it's worthwhile, it's got to work for me right now. And, um, you know, I put together, you know, she was in uh, tent, uh, ICU, critical care, and I went home and I, I just went through all the stuff that I had, you know, because I had like a witch doctor cabinet, you know, I had everything, all kinds of exotic, exotic herbs and everything, so I just put together the best mineral-based liquid, because I knew she wasn't going to take no herbs or drink no tea, something that I could drop under her tongue real easy and quick. Um, and get the job done. And um, I had her back in school within a matter of five months. You know, I had her out of the intensive care in a, maybe a matter of days, out of the hospital in a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, people were like, how did you do that? Not to mention the staff of the hospital. Like, how did you do that? This is Columbia Hospital, which is like the best hospital in the northeast section of America right, for right, children. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, so people want to know how I did it, friends and family, and when I told them I had whipped something up, they wanted me to share it, and you know, so that's basically, you know, people word of mouth, like, yo, how, can you help me with this, can you help me with that, and um, so I just had the mama Thomas. Anybody that needed any herbs at that time, though, I would just write down the herbs and tell them to write it down and go get it. So that lasted for a while and people kept saying, well, can't you just get the herbs for me and I give you the money because I can't get this herb, I can't find that and blah, blah, blah. So um, I created the, the Candida cleanse, uh, cleanse compound and then after that it was the blood electrifier. People were having a lot of iron problems and um, the majority of people that I see with iron problems is because they're copper deficient. Okay. So um, the, the blood electrifier is a, a copper and iron compound. Um, and it just kind of grew from there. And, and then people were, the main thing I noticed people needed was the information. So, so people wouldn't be trading their dependency on um, Western medicine for dependency on me. I put the books together and now the online school together so that people can get the information 
that way, and then people can be their own, you know, physician heal thyself. But now you can heal yourself, your family members, children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's about empowering the people. Now, I wanted to ask as far as the information that you, um, I guess you learned throughout the years, that stuff that you study throughout the years, coming up with herbs, things of that nature. Did you go to school, or how did you um, come up with everything? I went, I went to, I took certifications anywhere okay. a certification popped up. Okay. Um, you know, one thing my dad told me was, you know, he said, you can learn anywhere. Right. I was like, no, but you got to go to school. He was like, what do they do in school? I was like, they teach. He was like, how do they teach? I said, out of books. He said, are books exclusive to school? I was like, okay, I got you. I got it. So, but, but I took certifications because I thought intrinsically that there were things that the people running the certifications knew that I couldn't find out unless I got it from them. So I went through the certifications and I suggest anybody searching. Um, don't think that just if you go to my school, that should be the end of your search. You should go to anything that opens up because you will always pick up, if not some new information, new perspectives on old information. You know, I still reread books and every time I reread books, it's like a brand new book. So, um, so it's just consistent study. And everything I do, I try to deal with experience-wise. So when I'm studying, I'm looking for information to validate um, things that I found out through experimentation, be it on myself, family members, friends, whatever the case is. So I try to understand, try to research reality. Because then it's easier to go through the research and the information and invest your time when it's real for you and it's something that's beneficial for you in your life. You know what I'm saying? Science is, is boring if it's devoid of its connection to people's life. Right. Especially when it pertains to you now, if you could, if you could explain to the audience your philosophy, because the lecture you just finished was called "The Devil Is a Liar," yes, sir. and your philosophy is, is parallel to the Bible. So if you kind of just go through that kind of philosophy, well, here's the thing with the Bible. You look at the the Quran. The Quran has its origins in the Bible. You look at the Bible. The Bible has its origins in Egyptian book. Of the Bible. You look at the Egyptian book of the dead has its origins in the pyramid text. Right, right. So what I saw was one stream of information coming down from my ancestors on how we should live and survive today. Um, so I try to get people to go back to studying those scriptures, whatever they're comfortable with. If the, if the Quran strikes a chord with you, then you should study the Quran. If the Bible strikes a chord with you, you should study that. If you know the Egyptian, all that, get into it. But don't be pretentious and superficial with the things that you do. Um, because a lot of times people make up a lot of reasons why they shouldn't study specific um, scriptures but then they don't take what they profess serious. Right, right. So, um, you know, I find right in the laws of Ma'at, if you go into uh, the 22nd law and the 27th law, it tells you not to partake in, in, in violence and polluting your body. So, even if you're dealing with the laws of Ma'at, it's still there. Um, you know, I can go through the Quran the same way I went through the Bible today and pull out all the verses and, you know, so it's, it's all the information is in those scriptures. And those scriptures is 1,500 years old, 2,500 years old. 4,000 years old and we ask him for questions that our ancestors already answered for us but because we are separated from those books we die like this is no other way to put it so um, I, I like to reconnect people with them and then try to open up their eyes so that when they read them they can understand that we're dealing with a people who spoke in different languages right then B, people who have a different time concept which gives them a different concept of life. So they would use different words to describe the same things that we would that we're dealing with today. So when you look at some of like for instance um, how Job describes telecommunications today, can you send lightnings so that when they reach their destination they can speak back to you? For somebody reading that, that just sound like mumbo jumbo. Can you send lightning somewhere so it'll say hi to you? But we do that every day with cell phones and telephones and computers now. So we gotta be able to understand in a different setting, that we're dealing with a translated language and in a different time period, how they would communicate common thoughts or, or, or same ideologies that we deal with today 
in a, in a different with different artic articulations. Now, I read an article a couple days ago about there is a, uh, a small town in Europe it's called Andorra, 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 and, and I read that that town has the highest life expectancy in the world between 82 to 85 years old from birth. And uh, one of the things that that town basically distinguishes is the fact that they have a very natural but stress well, I, would say, I wouldn't say stress, but low stress environment. Um, as far as uh, health today, especially in our community, the black community, how important it is for our stress level um, in our environment and where we where we were brought up. How important that? Um, it's crucial. In fact, that's that's a bad question in a way because the answer I could go on forever. Like I could do it. I could do a whole number three, four hours on stress. Um, but I can say this: people that die from diabetes, the majority, sixty-five percent of the people that die from diabetes die from heart attack which is inflammation, which is basically the physical signs of stress setting into the body. Yeah. So, um, so stress is, is paramount. This is why people create businesses so that they can pay somebody to deal with all of the stress that comes with uh, supplementing their lifestyle. Right? So they don't have to deal with that stress and now they're free to live and, and study and practice their spirituality and all of those things that we associate with a good life. So really, um, I mean that's 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 paramount is to do you know get out of jobs. I mean the the, the main source of stress is, is doing things that we don't want to do every day. It hurts the will. It has a subconscious effect. It, it diminishes the spirit. Um, waking up, that feeling, that hopelessness, is do, doing something that you don't want to do crushes your willpower daily. That has a, a effect on you in terms of inflammation and cardiac arrest and it's just a whole lot of, a lot of things. So the first thing is, is you got to have a job, uh, believe in your company, believe in your product, believe in what you do. Um, outside of that, you want to try to create a situation where you can, if not create your own business, because for us to get the idea in our mind that everybody's an entrepreneur, that's just not the case. Everybody's not going to open their own business. They, yeah. We don't have to. Everybody doesn't have that that out. But be open to recognizing a good idea coming from somebody else and if you don't have one maybe you can invest or partner up with somebody else and be a part of their business if you believe in that model. But you want to do something in life that you like, that you believe in. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the and it's not working. Right. That's the reason why I pose that question is because let's say if someone comes to you and they want to do business with you regarding your herbs and, and the products that you have and they they take all they day take twice herbs, on Sunday and they they even convert their diet into more of a, more of a vegan or organic diet but at the same time they have a stressful environment they work in or they have a stressful environment at home which contributes to they're not actually doing better as far yeah, as the diet. The, the better diet is going to help protect them from the damages that's caused, but eventually they're going to have to deal with all this. Right, exactly. So as far as the products that you have here today, I know you have many products available for the, uh, the consumers today. If you briefly explain exactly what kind of products that you have on display today and on um, your website as well. Yeah, I have the Mama Thomas here, which is the, the flagship. Um, I have the Candida Cleanse. The Mama Tomics is about um, hydrating the body, pulling heavy minerals out of the body, um, remineralizing the cells, uh, intracellular cleansing. Uh, the Candida Cleanse is about eliminating parasites, yeast, and fungus, but also getting the white blood cells in check. The white blood cells is a very big problem. Right. The Candida Cleanse helps you do that. And then the limelight. The limelight is important because the solar people, we have to reestablish our solar equipment in the body, our electrical circuitry, and our relationship with the sun. And um, there's a word that I, I'm, I'm trying to get this word to become a common usage when talking about black biology, and that's called photovoltaic. So when I talk about Mama Thomas, Mama Thomas is the first ever photovoltaic supplement. What photovoltaism is, is the ability to convert sunlight into electricity, and that's what our biology allows us to do. When we are separated from places, environments that allow us to do that, sickness sets in. Wow, so that so so Mama Tomic is actually a product that you develop yourself? Yeah, all okay. of them. Wow. Okay. Well, I do it all. That's why sometimes people be like, Minister, I ordered my stuff two weeks ago, three weeks ago, where's my 
I got to create the formulas. I got to mix the formulas. I put the herbs in the capsules. I put each label on each bottle. I put each top on each. I vacuum pack each one. Um, I put the seal on the outside on each one. I do the labels for the DVD. I burn every individual DVD. Package each DVD. Put the, the slip in the outside in the jacket in each DVD. Write the books. Write the lectures. All that on the schedule. Do the consultation. All that stuff. So sometimes, like we're working on getting staff and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Right now, it's just I do it all. It's just stuff. The video. I got to get all this footage and edit all this stuff down. And so pretty much a renaissance man, basically. <laughs> That's, that's good stuff. Um, also, I, I basically I saw an interview uh, on YouTube that you, you mentioned that you have about um, 13 books that you've written, yeah. and you have three published. Is that still the case? Seven, now? seven, seven are in circulation right now. Seven, okay. seven are flowing around. Um, Black Genetics One, Black Genetics Two, um, Cellular Water, The Money Mind State, The Quantum Mind State. Um, Melanin Mind State, uh, Sunday School, uh, I think that's all, okay, I think that's all seven. Black Genetics 1 and 2, Money, the, the, the Magical Tongue series, which is three books, Money Mind State, Quantum Mind State, Melanin Mind State, Cellular Water, and Sunday School. Okay. And all of those are available on the website, theamberinstitute.com, theamberinstitute.com, and also the online classes, so you can learn all this stuff yourself. You can just enroll in the classes, it's about $25 a month. If you don't have $25 a month to, to, to learn your body, your, your, how to take care of yourself, your children, your family, we don't want you in a damn school. Wow, that's, that's good stuff. So as far as the curriculum for the class, what exactly do you have? Um, basically, the first semester is pretty much anatomy, physiology, learning um, the body in terms of what everything does, how each system in the body relates to one another, okay. uh, the mineral composition, and um, the herbal composition in terms of uh, minerals. So we want to learn how to remineralize the body. For instance, it's important if I want to deal with somebody having uh, type 2 diabetes, pancreas issues, I need to know that the most prevalent minerals there are going to be chromium and vanadium. So then I need to know which plants are high in chromium and vanadium in order to get those back into the body and the bioavailable. And then I need to know also mineral relationships so that when I'm putting the compounds together, I know all of the supporting minerals for vanadium and chromium to combine those together so that they can do the job. Now, the last question, I have, I have many questions, but I want to keep this real very brief. Now, the last question as far as, um, as you know, as you mentioned in your lecture, you know, 13% of the population of the United States uh, is African Americans, but we leave the nation in the most common diseases, you know, cancer, uh, diabetes, things of that nature. Um, what are some of the preventive methods in your studies that we have to do to actually break that cycle as far as not leading the nation in those kind of diseases? That kind of um, on top of the, the obvious, which would be changing the diet and exercise right. and all that kind of stuff, is investing the time and a little bit of money and to study it ourselves. We're not going to get anywhere as a people without studying ourselves. A lot of times we put the, the, the horse, the, the carriage before the horse, or you know, uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater, so it should be like Todd to say. Um, what we have to understand is all of our behaviors, everything that we do is based on the genetics, the genetic codes that we have in our body. How those genetic codes uh, are turned on and off is based on what we put on. So you know, that's, that, that, that's just the whole thing. We, gotta, we, gotta we have to understand that information because no two people are the same. What I put in my body, and me and you both have type 2 diabetes, in order to reverse that type 2 diabetes, we both have, we both, 9 out of 10 times, we'll have a separate path to walk 
in order to get back to health. So we really need to understand our own chemistry in order to be able to communicate that to the children. And then um, a lot of people are, are dealing with food now, and that's awesome, but even with the food, you want to know how those foods and things we use to grow on right, gotcha. affect the body, affect the brain. Um, we see what's happening with our children in the schools, so we want to be able to put the things in the children's bodies so that they begin to excel. Because learning, um, consciousness, awareness, uh, thought transmission, all of those things are based on good health. Um, so, so if I can let everybody know um, all your information as far as how they can contact you, your website, where they can purchase your products and that kind of thing. All right. First, I just want to thank the brother for coming. The brother hung out with us all day. Um, but 404-457-0844, 404-457-0844, you can call me up. Um, if I don't answer, text me. Don't leave a voicemail. All right? If you leave a voicemail, you're just going to be frustrated. So text me. So I can see it. Um, and you can go to the website, theamberinstitute.com, and you can also join the community at chaselight.org. All right, so chaselight.org, amberinstitute.com. Um, also, you can find me by uh, going to dropsquadkitchen.com, um, and that's where you find all the information about healthy food and all that kind of stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So yeah, definitely. I think it's very imperative for us to know exactly what's going on with our anatomy. Um, educate ourselves, empower ourselves with what's going on in that health wise. And uh, you know, there's an old African proverb where it says, know thyself. I said know thyself. So, right, exactly. So, you know, that's that's simple as that. Know thyself. Empower Vegan yourself. Mafia. Right, exactly. Um, and, and just basically try to learn as much as you can as far as what you put into your body. I'm, I'm starting to do that right now. I mean, it's better late than never. So you always got to encourage yourself to do better and teach your children exactly what's going on with their anatomy and their body and that kind of thing. So I think it's very imperative that you do that. So, so definitely check out this brother's work. He has a lot of stuff online. I checked him out on YouTube and all his websites. is very, very informative for the people out there. It's best to pull color and uh, just go check it out. So, uh, once again, this is Chauncey, aka you Karima, signing off. Peace.